Peace, 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 family. It's yours truly, CEO of Synergetic Network Group, LLC, Amara Mar in the building. It's on once again. It's on on the platform. We got the queen in the building. You know we got to have that balanced, balanced out energy. We got Queen Nana Ya in the building, CEO of St. Kofa Repatriation Assistance Program in the building. As we promised, <laughs> she's going to break it down to you. We're going to talk about going back to our roots we're going to talk about the importance of that and so much more so if you would be so kind at this time to share and invite remember smg highlight is here for your business so if you have a business that you would like to put on the map you want to come on and present your business uh your products and or service please reach out and touch me or my queen amani amari she is the executive director of the business Synergetic Network Group, LLC, we are your community liaison for entrepreneurs and consumers. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekend. I sure am. Had a wonderful dialogue with the queen before we came on. And I promise you, you are in for a treat. So at this time, if you'll be so kind to share and invite. Also, if you are an entrepreneur, make sure that you drop that business out there in the comment block so we can highlight you. Who can support a business if nobody knows about you? So go ahead on, put that business out there. Give us a shout out. Let us know where you're tuning in from, your city and state. Rep your city and your state. Rochester, New York, right here, 585 in the building. We got Memphis, Tennessee in the building. Yes, sir. We get ready to go live. Go live. If you would, again, share and invite, please. Make sure you check out our website, www.alkevalonlife.com, where we provide African men and women's attire, accessories, health and beauty products for your health and beauty products and accessory needs. www.lkevalonlife.com. Again, if you out there, put that business in the comment block. Put that business in the comment block. We want to send you a shout out on the day. Whoever's out there, we want to show you some love. We getting ready to get in. We getting ready to dive in here. Yeah. Queen Nani, y'all, how you doing over there? I'm great, brother. I'm great. How are you? <laughs> yes, sir. This my sister right here, man. She and I, we did a program with brother Alpha Quaba. And I didn't even know my sister was gonna be on there, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I was, I was definitely. I must admit, you know how you uh, have the um, what, what do they call it when you got the superstar, you know, and, and you see them, and you be like, oh, you know, that, that's the way I felt when I seen my sister. I promise you, you know, because I love the work that she's doing, man. All right, so we get ready. We're gonna get dive in. We're gonna build right about now. It is on, family. It is on. So as we promised, we have again the CEO Queen Nana Ya in the building, the CEO of San Kofa Repatriation Assistant Program. Queen, how are you doing? Talk to us on the day. I'm wonderful, brother. I'm doing great. Thank you. It's a beautiful um, Sunday uh, afternoon here in DC. Uh, nice and sunny. The weather is beautiful. I'm doing great, you know, other than we just can't be out and about <laughs> because of yeah, COVID 19, but yes, it you know, I'm feeling good spirits. Wonderful, wonderful. We glad to hear that. So, Queen, you know, you are a Memphis, Tennessee native, that correct? I am not a native, but okay. I um I did live there for a number of years. I went to law school there and then I had my own wow. law practice there, but I'm not a native. I'm a miss I'm down the street. I'm I'm not far from I'm a Mississippi Clarksdale, Mississippi oh. native. <laughs> you from yeah. N I double S I double S I double P I Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so how in the world did a Mississippi girl end up on the other side of the world? Talk to us. How did that come about? You over in Africa now, Ghana. What's up? Uh bro, listen, it um uh, it's been a journey. I mean, uh just growing. Uh over time, as I became older and got exposed to more and more information and start self-reflecting about who I was, uh, and particularly, you know, with things that, you know, I have witnessed in this country, um, I've always 
been in love with black people period anyway and then just going deeper into that and we are just more than black people we are african people oh, and oh, and, talk and, about and it. yeah and uh you know knowing that we had a history before slavery that you know uh that was you know because in the schools here i can tell you that i wasn't taught anything about um africa um, growing up, I didn't learn anything about who who I was as an African woman uh, mm -hmm. or our true history. Growing, you know, going to school in this country, yes. I became self aware uh, just by meeting people, moving throughout you know the world, and meeting people who began to drop nuggets of information that I'm somebody. I'm always inquisitive, and I never had this idea, this notion that I know everything. So. Mm -hmm. When I, you know, when people tell me stuff, I will go look it up. That goes all the way back from when my mother, when I was a little girl in Mississippi and I would go to school and my mother would always tell me, if the teacher says something that you, that you don't understand, don't let her keep going. You make her stop and don't let her go any further until you understand it, right? Yeah. She's like, I don't care. You. So I've always been that person. And, and my mother would, would never answer a question. If I asked her a question, she said, go look it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she would never. She, she could, her thinking was, I will retain it if I went and looked it up for myself, rather than her just telling me. So I don't care what it was. If I asked her something, she said, well, "Go look it up and come back and tell me what you found out." So that 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 training early on to accept new information or to go inquire and be inquisitive came from my mother at, at a very young age. So hmm. as I began to get older and I. I have been in the military and everything, and I, I was still under this because I grew up in the military, and then I followed in my parents, both my parents, my mother, father. What branch of service was you in? Army. Oh, Lord, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that had been my life. And Marine so, Corps. Yeah. Hoorah. <laughs> so I was really following in the footsteps of my parents uh, and went into the Army myself, and I, you know, was this gung-ho american you know um until i ended up going to uh austin p state university and i took this african studies class uh from this one professor named dr dr mock that was his name dr mock and he was the first pan-african black nationalist pro-black taking uh people to africa person that I had met. And when when I met that man and I saw how firm he was in his identity as an African man, even though he was from the United States. And and I I, I was just in awe of him. So even you know I was a non traditional student. I have children and everything because uh, I had gotten out of the military and went back. To get my under finish my undergraduate, I had started back, you know, when I first graduated high school. But anyway, I, well, my point is this: I was just in awe of Dr. Mock, and so I always wanted to be at his foot and listen and hear. So when he would be in the cafeteria, one of us would follow him to the cafeteria and listen to him talk. You know what I mean? And that's when I became a uh, uh, radicalized in, in my African net. You know, and then uh, I cut, and at that time I had been wearing the the, the weave and the perms and stuff. And I, cut, I went on home and got the clippers and just cut all my hair down to you know to to be one hundred percent wear my own natural hair. You know what I'm saying? And, it, <laughs> and then I ended up uh, going to University of Memphis Law School. Uh, right after graduation, and and then I ran into a sister that you know, sister and brother, power and future. Yeah, uh, they're in Memphis of Napa by nature, and I love started, I love their food, the speed vegan yeah. family. Y'all need to uh, check them out, the speed vegan. Yeah, yeah, and and when I introduced were introduced and they were traveling to the continent and they were listening to Ray Hagans and they they that's when I really started finding out about that's my man right John there. Henry Clark and yes and Ivan Van Sertima and I'm like and at this point I'm in law school so I'm like how did I get all the way 
I graduated with honors from high school. I graduated cum laude from university. Here wow. I am in law school, and I never knew any of this. Wow. And, and so and I'm like, they so, are so doing expound us on a what is the this that you these, that you're talking about? Expound on on what 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 is it that that you? I uh, never I, they did any of our African history. Okay. Anything about us as African people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, and, and even the, you know, that's when I, you know, started learning that, you know, how did we get these religions? These are mm. not our religion, all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And now that one was a tough pill for me mm. to swallow. Yeah, but we can relate. But the inquisitive person that I, yeah, but being the person I was, I, I literally would just be at the library and start doing all this research on Christianity. You would have thought I was in theological school, <laughs> but I, for months, I and, and I had this big king size bed, and it, I, I had a little space for me to sleep, and there were books all in the bed. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to know the truth. Yeah. And I remember, I remember when I woke up. One day, I just woke up and I was like, "Damn, we've been lied to." You know what hmm. I mean? Because oh, I then, definitely know what you mean. My wife yeah, and I and, both can. Yeah, and and seeing, you know, that the information is not hidden. They they the information is out there about what they have, you know, how they have perpetrated this fraud and how they've lied and how they've manipulated the truth. It's mm. just that the vast majority of us don't go in and you know in search of that truth. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you that it was power and future. Uh that was like, sister, that's not that's not us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't understand. And then I had been to Italy. That's another thing. And I had Italians tell me huh, that is not real, sis. That's not that stuff. Italians in in Rome, where the Vatican, I had Italians telling me it's not real, uh, and I was like, ah, "What are you talking about?" You know. What I mean? so, wow. Oh, um, I definitely, I definitely know what you're talking about. I yeah. matter of fact, it was my queen that introduced me to to Ray Hagen. She she yeah. was because honestly, I never had heard of him before, um, and yeah. whatnot. She was the one who had told me about him too, and he had said some very. Uh, mind challenging things very thought provoking things yeah you know yeah. so well with that yeah, being Ash said crazy all of them uh Tony there you go Crowder. there you go baba asher crazy yeah i listen to yes ashwar mary walk mary yeah uh uh um tony brown i mean just you know all oh, of them all, wonderful. All yeah of them. you know i had we had tony brown on our platform really that's awesome oh yeah, okay. oh, yeah. Okay. the video that we have on our main playlist um when you go to our youtube channel um, we have been blessed. Brother Kevin Dorval is the one that introduced me to um, Baba Tony Browder. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. indeed. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then, you know, just being exposed to all the information and I was just soaking it all up. And, and with that came this pull towards Africa mm. uh, that I, you know, that that's my home. That's where I came mm. from. That's where my ancestors came from. You know what I mean? And this this thing that to reconnect with the continent of Africa became, you know, very strong and overwhelming. So that, mm. that, that's how that came. Yeah. Now, now, now. Let's talk about that, because I noticed that you have an Afrocentric title to the actual business, Sankofa. So so talk to us about what Sankofa means to you. Mm mm-hmm. Sankofa means to it's a uh, it's a, a kind word and the symbol of it is a bird, the Sankofa bird, and he's his head is turned around, right to to the back, and and what it symbolizes is to go back and to fetch to go back and fetch what you've lost. That's what Sankofa means. So mm-hmm. I thought that was the perfect title or name for what my organization is because in fact we want to assist our people to retrieve to go back to what they've lost and to connect with that um and to regain to recapture you know we have lost memory we are people walking around with lost memory 
and we have to reconnect with who we are. We've been yeah. grossly, um, grossly miseducated as a people. I mean, it, it, it's a crime against humanity in and of itself what they've done to us in terms of making us forget, you know, who we are, where we come from, our land, our language, our names, everything. That mm. in and of itself is a, you know, the physical chattel slavery thing was was bad, but to do to a people what they what they've done to us mentally and psychologically mm -hmm. is also a, a crime against humanity. Now, would you say then the inspiration of why you're doing what you're doing is to reconnect us with our culture? Is that right? Not just the culture, but the land itself mm -hmm. with our identity as an African people. Um, that's my son back there. <laughs> oh, it's okay, family. It's okay. No worries. Um, we, uh, you know, for the past 400 years have been uh, not only displaced, but economically and socially oppressed. Hmm. No matter where you find right. our people in the diaspora, uh mm -hmm. in in south america and brazil you know um colombia ecuador um the you know wherever you find our people you know we are at the bottom economic we're at the bottom of the economic and social status we are at mm -hmm. the bottom you know that you know you have a few that can rise up and do well but the overwhelming majority of our people are not doing well that and is for me, true that's a problem that is true that's a problem you know, that you know? It is. Uh, and so uh there's a lot of opportunity for our people on the continent of africa mm -hmm. uh you know this COVID 19 kind of threw a monkey wrench into things but yeah um at the end of the day any report that talk about global economies will all of them from the imf the world bank every all of them the brookings institute all of them were saying the exact same thing all the world's leading economists from india from all over the world were saying the exact same thing well africa was where the economic opportunities are because they are in emerging those are where the emerging markets are they're going through their industrialization period so to speak Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where there's a lot of potential for economic growth and mm. Africa economies are growing so fast and everybody's talking about it. So I said to myself, why, why should all of these other races of people reap the economic benefit when we who have the birthright to, to Africa are uh, out here suffering? You know what I mean? If I anybody should... That's, that's true. If anybody deserve to have take advantage of that growth that's happening on the African continent, it should be her children. That's it should right. be her children, and, and, and particularly that's her children. Who, yes, who were taken away by force, and so uh, really, it was a combination of I want to encourage our people to embrace their African identity. Mm -hmm. uh, let's unify ourselves, no matter where we are in the world, whether we're on the mm -hmm. continent or whether we are in North America or in the Caribbean. Or, let's unify the con around the common goal of uplifting Africa and not yes. allow all these other people to come in and take advantage of what is our birthright. That's right. That's right. So, so let's, let's yeah. talk about how do you embracing your culture queen how did that revolutionize your life my sister brother i can't tell you uh nothing in this world in, intimidates me at all hmm. i i look at all the the proud and brave black people from the continent all you know who who fought who fought the long hard fight against uh the 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 enslavers and the col uh, colonizers who sacrificed themselves knowing what would happen but they did it anyway mm -hmm. to stand up for for me uh, and mm -hmm. you and all mm -hmm. of us that's right and, 
and even in the diaspora, the list is so long of our people. We've been fighting this fight for so long. That's true. And, and I said to that's myself, that's a sad truth. Yeah, we've been fighting in, in in the Caribbean with our people, you know, from from the Quilombos, the 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 Maroons, mm -hmm. uh, that's right. Haiti. That's right. It, you know, and we're that's still right. fighting. So this, fight is, Rudy Bokeman. this fight is not over. That's right. It's still going on. Yes, These it people is. like to play games and they like to act like they are, you know, they are have being helpful, but you know, they are covertly doing the exact same things they, they've always done, you know, in terms of trying to um take resources from the continent of Africa and also overtly oppressing us and killing us they're killing us here in the united states they're killing us in colombia they are Fact. killing us in brazil and what i want african people to do is you have to it can't be a matter of that's those people in brazil or that's Talk just those, that's just those people in america that they are killing no that you know they are the ones also on the continent of africa um provide you know uh, uh destabilizing and creating situations where our people end up you know doing things to themselves and sometimes they they are you know what they did to libya mm -hmm. uh, because gaddafi was saying no more of this we are going to get the continent free from you and they didn't want that and so you mm -hmm. see what they did uh to him so mm -hmm. uh it 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 made me say that none of us None of us, until all of us are free, none of us are free. Mm -hmm. I can go and live my life. I'm an attorney. I, I can go and just work a job and I can just live my life and I can say, I'm not worried about all of that. But what does that say about me if I do that? Because we are all part of the one African body. And I look at, and, I, and I've used this analogy, oh, right. we are a body. Brazil right. might be the right arm. North America might be the left arm. Africa may be the torso. Mm -hmm. Black Britons in 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 uh you know in blacks in Europe may be the the right leg. You know what I mean? But at the end absolutely. of the day, we all are one body. There you and go. So, That's right. And and we absolutely cannot be a whole functioning body if 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 the if the the cells in your lungs are different. Those are lung cells. They are different from the cells in your kidneys. Those are kidney cells. They are different from the ones in your heart. They're not identical. But you need all of them to be healthy, to have a healthy body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so yes, I do. Black people yes, I do. in Brazil are being oppressed, black people everywhere will be oppressed. If Africa is not free, black people all over the world are not free and we see that and so it's imperative it's a matter of downright survival mm -hmm. that we unite around our africanness our and 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 come together we don't have to all practice we don't you know Thank let's you. leave religion alone there you if go you a, if you want to be a muslim be a muslim but guess what you are african first first and foremost you are african if you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. But you are African first. So mm -hmm. no matter what your religion, your religious beliefs are, I don't care even if you, you if you are polygamous or monogamous. Guess what? You are African first because when these people are out <laughs> here shooting us, oh, and killing right. us, they don't ask those kind of questions before they kill us. You understand what I'm saying? Facts. They Facts. Don't, Facts. They don't care. So, Absolutely. I totally agree with you on that. You know, once once we understand that even though some of us may not came over here, we may not have come over here on the same boat. But what we must understand is like what you said. I love what you said. You are absolutely right, sis. We may not have came over here on the same boat, but guess what? We're all in the same boat. Exactly. That's what I want people to understand, too. You your answers may not came over here on that ship, yeah. but we're all in the same ship if you yeah. will, when it comes to systemic oppression of the yeah. indigenous people of this continent or the continent as we know it as Africa as well. So I, I definitely totally agree with you on that. So with that being said, 
Um, talk to us then about why you construct the Sankofa repatriation um, assistance program and, and how does that uh, play a, a role in, in, uh, in our unity and, and also the upbuilding and, and the economic uh, empowerment of our people? Well, okay, can you imagine, just use your imagination here. If we were to raise the capital to do mass repatriation of our people back to the continent and help those people establish businesses, viable businesses, one, that helps our people in the diaspora who are economically oppressed, right? Now you are free. You are on the continent. You got a, a business that's going and running, and you can now also employ continental Africans. So it helps us and it helps them. And it also builds a bridge for uh, those that we get on the continent of Africa who and we get them set up because Sankofa is first and foremost a business incubator. Everything always comes down to economic, brother. Absolutely. Okay. So, it's, <laughs> so the, the goal is to, to get our people on the continent, back on the continent where they are you know, somewhat free from direct oppression where we can yeah. take a breather because I, when I was, you know, one of the things that I observed is that the vast majority of our brothers and sisters who are able to repatriate successfully. Mm -hmm. And there are tens of thousands of them throughout, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, not just in Ghana either. Mm -hmm. there, they are coming, but the, mm -hmm. the overwhelming vast majority of them are over the age of 60. Wow. And and that's because they have pensions, they have social security, they have that steady income coming in that mm -hmm. you know that they can survive. They can live much better lives in the continent of Africa because things are uh, absolutely less expensive. You know, mm -hmm. far more less expensive. So mm. even if you get twelve hundred dollars a month. If you mm -hmm. multiply that, say, in Ghana by five times five, wow. that's a substantial amount. When the average Ghanaian salary is about four or five hundred dollars, uh, Ghana CDs, the equivalent of about one hundred and fifty dollars, mm -hmm. and you're talking about is that is that a week, sister Yah, or is that like um, oh, yeah, I'm talking about a month? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, uh, you're living really like a king or queen. You understand what I'm My saying? Uh, if you know, so I but the but the vast majority of our people who haven't reached retirement age don't have a steady income. They are living paycheck to paycheck here, and mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the diaspora, in the mm -hmm. states, in in the UK, and if we go to to you know Ecuador and Brazil, they're living hand to mouth. They're getting out there trying to find something to eat for today. You know what I mean? I so. Do. So how are they going to get money to go to Africa and, and get themselves established? So I said to myself now, uh, because so many people were contacting me and they were like, oh, sister, yeah, I see what you, you know, you, you got this going on in Ghana, you got that. How can I do it? You know, I, I want to do it, but I, you know, what can I do? I can't quit my job because, you know, you're talking about quitting your job. People can't quit their job that easily and move to another city. And you're talking wow. about going to the other side Somebody of the world. Got Somebody the got it. I'm so glad is, you're telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, yeah. okay, here we, we're basically stuck. Our people are stuck here. They didn't ask to be here. And now they can't even afford to go back home. And I'm like, no, Somebody no, no, no. It's not thank right. You, you know what I'm saying? Some people talk yeah. like it is so easy to just uproot and just go back to the motherland, like, you know, like on a movie or something. Yeah, let's get in this boat and paddle all the way back to the cop. Come on now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Come and, on. And, now. And, and, yeah. And so I said, we might not, our people, may not have a whole lot of money individually, but collectively we have trillions, right? And yes. we spend Facts. trillions. Facts. So all we have to do 
is come together and everybody put a few, you put your few pennies together with my few pennies together with, and we get enough of our people putting some pennies together, mm -hmm. then you got something to work with. Mm -hmm. Where you can begin to say, okay, let's, we got the skills from living here. We built America. We built we everything. You know, we, uh, we built it. They brought us from Africa because they came into Africa and they saw civilization. They didn't come into Africa and see uh, nothing. They wanted what they saw. They wanted us to build for them what we had built for ourselves. And so we came here and we built this place. And I'm like, we can go to Africa and contribute to its revival, to its renaissance, to its, you know, we we because we have the education we have the skills in the diaspora mm -hmm. all we need is to put in a infrastructure mm -hmm. that supports our people to make that trip back to the continent okay so queen we have a question out in the audience uh the question is the proposed immunity passport by eugenist bill gates is going to cause a challenge do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, just because he proposed it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I mean, I can propose something. It don't mean anybody can propose something, you know, <laughs> but it's, it, it's not. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, what I'm supposed to say about that. Just because he proposed <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. Uh, he can, yeah, it, he, you know. Well, I, I personally, I personally feel like, you know, um, like what you said, you know, I, I really don't really feel like that is going to occur. Um, I know at one time they did state that uh, they were putting a hold on passports that and I'm going to just say this in the state of Tennessee. Um, that is not the case. Um, they are still allowing you to do that. So, you know, with that being said, I, I don't believe that's going to happen either. Um, on to another question from one of the members in the audience, Queen Gloria Capels. Do people settle in the same community or are they all over Ghana? You can settle wherever you want. Yeah, I mean, there's no, they don't have a, a area corned off for returnees. <laughs> you go, <laughs> you know what I mean? You go and <laughs> get your land and you build or you buy wherever you want you go live wherever you want there are some areas that have you know where some people have huddled together and bought land and live close to each other that that happens but it's not a requirement you can go and live wherever you want okay speaking of which the sankofa repatriation assistance program is a part of a big land giveaway over there. Let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, actually, Sankofa is not a part of it. I, me, in my individual capacity, have been assisting the rulers of uh, Asebu, Ase, the, 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 the king, Okateshi, of Asebu traditional area, set aside 5,000 acres, like a, a, a lot of other um a lot of other chiefs have done all over africa and said if you all want to return here's some land for you so the the king uh okateshi of asebu set aside five thousand acres in that area for people who would like to return so i have been assisting uh our people uh with the application process and getting their money uh, submitted because you have to pay for your own survey and demarcation and your title work the land itself is free mm -hmm. you know but but you you know of course the king can't pay for everybody's you know no doubt you know, all the stuff that so, so what's, comes the, what's the fee is the fee still the same the last time i heard for the 80 by 80 plots is 700 for 100 by 80 plot it is 1000 uh and for 100 by 100 is 1200 uh now uh, uh just so people can get an idea how big that is uh 100 by 80 the middle one is about a quarter of an acre so so 
the 80 by 80 is about 20 square feet smaller than a quarter and 100 by 100 is about 20 square feet larger but so they're good good size plots of land that you can put a house on you know uh, of course the bigger the plot then you have more space because some people want to do things like swim pools or hair gardens and things like some people are buying two three uh i mean not buying but some people are but i think uh when i talk to nana over Kessie, they don't want people to get more than two because they want to have you know be it's five thousand acres and it's wow. open to the diaspora That's so they want things. everybody to be able if they want it you know so they don't want one person come to take i want 10 acres and all that type of stuff you know what i'm saying it may. <laughs> so the most yes, they will allow you to do is two. Yeah. Okay. So now is the is the hotel and is the orange juice business opportunity still open? I'm not familiar with what hotel. Um, I think it was the one with the two hundred dollars you put you put in on it. Okay. No. 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 That that is a that's different. That is a, it's not a hotel. There's oh, a okay. building. My fault. In there's a there's a building in Kosovo and, and that I was trying to get our people to help us raise the money to rent that building. It's it's four apartments, uh buildings. Okay, it's two, apartments. It's, Thank you. It's, it's two apartments on top, two apartments on bottom, a total of four apartments in the building. And what we wanted to do was to make that the Sankofa repatriation assistance program headquarters in Ghana. And we will use one unit as the office, as you know, um, for for Sankofa. And then the other three we would use, you know, for like Airbnb, uh, receiving people when they come on vacation and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, to have a base, to have a, a, a actual physical base in Ghana. So that's what that's about. And okay. and uh, the 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 apartment. Uh, the the landlord she has some people in there but i think the last people would be out in september so she said if we raise the money that you know we could have the whole building um to rent and it was like 250 a month for each apartment they're two nice two bedroom apartments and we we're going to furnish it so we needed like twelve thousand for the year for the whole building and then the extra three thousand we would use to put furniture in so when people come those who donate two hundred dollars or more uh, could stay for free for a week, and uh, and we would kind of do it like a timeshare. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then when nobody is there and in it, we would um, use it for Airbnb to generate income because it's in a wonderful location, about eleven minutes walk from from the beach over there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a very nice nice building, and so that's what that was about. Wonderful. Now, is that opportunity still open for people that want to participate? Yeah, if people want to help us raise that money, yes, we are still we still got that GoFundMe going, and we we really want to try to get that building. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. So, um, what 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 is that information for that GoFundMe? I could type. Ah, uh, in... brother. You know what? If I stop and start looking up that, let me come back and post it in the thread after we finish. Because okay, I sure. Don't, no worries. I don't have no worries. Right. Now, what about the uh, the orange juice uh, opportunity? Uh, we are still working on that, getting that together, uh, working on the website and everything. Uh, Cebu, the area where the 5,000 acres is, they produce about 10 million tons of oranges every year. And the sad part is Ghana, I, anybody in here that's been to Ghana should can testify that you know because the fruit is natural the food is natural it tastes different and better <laughs> okay mm, so mm. there are these oranges that are so sweet and the bananas just melt in your mouth like sugar and the pineapple wow. is so sweet you know what i mean it's just doesn't taste like this stuff we eat over here you'll be mm. trying to figure out I, all this time i thought i was eating pineapple i don't know what i was eating when you go eat <laughs> ghana pineapple you understand when you go eat ghana orange so they produce all these millions of tons of oranges they have a growth a huge area of just that's what they produce in that area but ghana is 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 the country itself is importing orange juice 
Wow. And they got all these oranges. You know what I'm saying? Man. So that's it's like, like dying um, with a loaf of a loaf of bread under your arm. Exactly. So what they want to do is do this orange juice factory and have diasporans uh to you know invest in it and become you know receive uh dividends annual dividends and things like that from it we're working mm -hmm. on it it's not finished yet um i'm hoping it'll you know the COVID 19 kind of slow everything that we were working on down brother that COVID 19 because the country itself went into uh they shut down for for about a month and they are opening up slowly not everything but little by little just like we're doing over here Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's going to be something that we're going to roll out and hopefully, you know, get that thing going and and because it's needed. There's absolutely no reason. And this is the, the problem we have on the African continent. And this is why I keep telling um, our people there's so much opportunity. See, they have raw product, but they need people to come and help add value to it. There's no mm -hmm. reason why Ghana is producing the lead world leading producer of cocoa but we oh. don't have you know we don't manufacturing chocolate you know wow. <laughs> we produce all of these tomatoes and yet we buy tomato paste and tomato sauce from other people mm. these, these mm. type of things you know what i'm saying yes i, so do. It's just, I do yeah it's just a lot that our people can do but our people really need to learn how to do like other races of people come together come together put y'all resources together and go create these things on the continent and um, akon said it best and i can't say it better than he did when he said no other place in the world a black person can go and and start a business and it become a fortune 500 in in a in a matter of two three years except africa you can do it if you you know if you can't do it by yourself even families should be coming together honestly that generational wealth that they kept us out of that they blocked us from getting africa is your opportunity to go and get it mm. all you even families should be coming together and having meetings and pooling resources this can lift whole families out of poverty wow the continent of africa if people just get their mind right stop one of the things i learned uh, observed mm -hmm. Africans in general are entrepreneurs they have an entrepreneurial spirit because you know mm -hmm. what they know that there's there is nothing to fall back on we yeah. got to make something happen or it's we just gonna be hungry and starving uh, exactly. so there is no section 8 there is no public housing there is no uh, welfare system there's no there's no food stamps coming so by nature, they if you if you're there, you're gonna see children hustling. Wow. Okay. They got if they parent on a little shop, the children as young as six, seven years old are gonna be when they're not in school, they get out of school, they're gonna be in that shop working. The parent can be going to the market and doing something, and a little kid be the one taking your order. You know what I'm saying? Wow. They have they come with this. Hustle man. Look at that <laughs> integrity. Look at look at the atmosphere that you're talking about. Yeah, continue to tell us about the culture over there, Queen. That'd be great. Yeah, even when the women, you know, when they're pregnant, they they have their babies on their back and they're working. You know what I'm saying? There is no maternity leave. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> so we have gotten so soft. I don't know another way to say it we really don't have that hustle mentality that entrepreneur spirit we don't we don't we they we have gotten so complacent and dependent on these people uh you know that you know we don't even now here we are we don't even control our own drinking water think about that when i was a little girl growing up in mississippi although we my granddaddy was a sharecropper which is one step up from a damn slave. But anyway, he was a sharecropper. We lived on this white man. I was born in the same house on this white man's cotton plantation that my mother was born on. But I can tell you this, the vast majority of our food, we had our own well for water. I remember it very well. Uh, 
as a little girl, my grandmother, the vast majority of our food came out of her garden. My granddaddy kept some hogs and some chicken. So our eggs came from there, our chicken. My, uh, ever so often, they, my granddaddy and, and the other men that lived, you know, in those little row houses, they would go to each other's house and help slaughter a hog and cure that meat and freeze it. And that's how families were fed. Hmm. Now, here we are, and, and really just one generation from my mother to me, we don't know how to feed ourselves. If these people close the grocery stores or stop delivering food, we're all screwed. We don't even feed ourselves anymore. Um, we we don't even provide ourselves with our own drinking water. You understand? So if they decide to poison the water, we're screwed, which we see happening all over the United States with the quality of water. Flint mm -hmm. being a prime example, although people talk about Flint all the time, Flint isn't the only one. You know what I'm saying? Where mm. the water is 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 damn undrinkable. That's and true. We, and we are, and, and I say this all the time to black people. How you, you don't even control the water you drink. And water is the bare necessity that a human being needs for, to live. You can't even live, but a very, and we don't even control our own water. That's a terrible position to be in as a people. You understand? That's true. Completely relying on people who don't like us to provide us with water. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're, <laughs> you know? you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's, that's a very thought-provoking statement that you made. You know, we do have to, I have to say this, though, we do have to get back to doing those things because we do have a history. It's, a, it's just a fact. We do have a history of being entrepreneurs. Madam C.J. Walker, uh, all the black Wall Streets before we came over here, you know, we was taken out of our country. We we did exactly what you're talking about. You know, we just have to get back to doing that, you know. And, and so that's the reason why I'm so glad that you came on here today to reconnect us with that entrepreneur mindset that we need to regain. You know, what you said is very powerful, very powerful. And all those of us who are making money out there. Uh, that's the reason why I asked you to post your businesses out there. Listen, family, we have to get back to doing this. We do. We have to get back to cooperative economics. And when we uh, pretty much glorize, you know, the European and we left our businesses, when we left our businesses, we caused our businesses to shut down. Yeah. And in fact, you know what the sad part is, sis? They come to our restaurants to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Soul food restaurants. Yeah. They come, they come to our restaurants. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We 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 have the best seasoning. We got the best cooking. You know, yeah. we're the ones that they monetize off of, and a lot of us don't recognize that we're in control. You're in control of your intellectual property. You you're in control of your voice of your gift of dancing, music, you know, your art ability, you know, and, and that's what I, I feel like some people don't understand. Now, P. Diddy, he got it. Master P, he got it. Uh, therefore, records, they unfortunately, they they brought death with them, though. You know what I'm saying? But um, we have to we have to understand how important it is to control. Yeah. To control you know what yeah. we have. We got to start putting our houses in land trusts. You know what I'm saying? We 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 don't have enough of this knowledge and I'm not beating people up. I'm just saying that we have to grow and expand this real estate, our intellectual property. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to do that. We got to. It's it's imperative we learn how to do business because that's why a lot of us get put out of business because we don't know how to do business. A lot mm -hmm. of us we're very skilled, but being skilled is, is not enough within itself to be a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. You have to know business in its totality, the legality piece about business as well, you know? And, and so I feel like we have to, we have to learn how to do this. And, and Queen, we thank you so much for coming on the program and thank you so much for sharing our experience. And, and, and in closing, if you would just share with us, your experience over in Ghana and, and, and the 
positive things, you know, the culture, you know, talk, talk to us, you know, uh, about that, if you would, please. And also um, your social media outlets where everybody can can connect with you on, please. Well, uh, you know, listen, let me just say this. I have people on the continent and a lot of people, uh, 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 a lot of us in the diaspora don't recognize that while while our brothers and sisters on the continent were able to retain more of the culture, the day-to-day culture, then we they they lost a lot of it as well. And, and colonialism, living under colonialism wasn't it, it's not like they had it better than us. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh Africa was completely devastated um on their own land. You know, a lot of them were running around like refugees and hiding and, you know, trying to keep the, the children that hadn't been taken from being taken. Can you imagine uh, families losing brothers and uncles and cousins and not knowing whatever happened to them? And the onslaught, they were fighting, they fought, and they the, the societies were completely devastated. So I don't want to romanticize Africa. There's a lot of work to be done on the continent. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I want people to understand is while there are, you know, you know, the, 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 the Christianity thing got a lot and the Islam thing got a lot of our people on the continent completely gone. Okay. And I want to be clear about that. You be prepared to see that. And it's sad. It is. Uh, you it know, is. I remember what happened in Sudan when the yeah. when the uh, Africans that the, the Africans that are Christian, the extremist Muslims uh, that are African came in there and killed them. Yeah, yeah, it 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 it's a lot of healing that has it even to the point where even on the continent, the ones that have been able to retain uh, the tradition, the spiritual systems, and uh, the secret societies and things, they are looked on as being evil and black magic and all of this type of stuff, you know, by, by continental Africans. Or that, you know, they've been taught that a lot of what it is to be African is not as good as white and European. And, and a lot of them feel like they were better under colonialism. <laughs> so I said mm. all that not to put them down, right? but to, to say that they need healing just like we need healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 they and we have access to more information about Africa than continental Africans. Yes. So a lot of people that, don't that realize. Is a fact. Yes. So this is an opportunity for us to come together and talk to one another, help each other remember. Because um we've lost our memory. Mm. That's Biggest thing that has happened to, even on the continent, a lot of them don't know who they are as African people. Thank you. Uh, Somebody tell and me. So, Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's My deep. Goodness. It's deep. It's deep. Yes, it so, is. Sis. Yes, it is. A lot of them look at a lot of the culture as primitive. You know, so we we got a lot. We got a lot of healing to to you know that needs to happen. Uh, yes, we not do, just with sister. us, but with them too. But Overall, generally, I can tell you that they are kind people, very yeah. inquisitive, welcoming. Yes. Uh, if you come, if you're a black American and you come over there, they're going to want to be your friend because they want to know all about you, where you come from. They want to know. They're very inquisitive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't have any problems at all. I didn't have, there was no issue of being ostracized. Most of them, I can tell you, are going to want to be your friend. They're going to want to talk to you. You know, you got to exercise. Pay. They don't know certain things. They don't know. You know, a lot of them haven't traveled anywhere. Yes. So yes. when they meet somebody That's from right outside, good. and I can see, yeah, and I can see how white people were able to m- manipulate that because they are very welcoming and open people just genuinely they they're going to welcome you and if you have bad intentions you know they they kind of 
just don't get it. That why? Because I think they aren't thinking like that. So why? Exactly. They're not thinking somebody else would be thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So exactly. yeah. Um, and I tell them all the time when it comes to to our open enemy, uh, who has proven himself over the past, you know, 500 years. It is what it is. History. It's not me saying it. I can back up what I'm saying with historical from the historical record. Mm -hmm. These people are our enemy now. Uh, and I tell them all the time tr when we tell you something about them, you have to listen to us because we lived in the house with them for 400 years. So when we tell you how they are, listen to us. We're not just being spiteful. When we tell you these people did these things and are doing these things, listen. You understand? Listen so they did we history don't repeat itself. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah definitely. So this, definitely. This, is really, this has been a, a learning yeah. a, a, a 500 year learning experience for us as people. Now we got to remember, we got to get our memory back. Listen, we as African people, once you know that math came from your people, math science came from your people writing just the writing paper writing came from your people uh medicine the first hospitals in the world african people the first medical books ancient medical books with procedures surgical procedures african people African people were doing cesarean sections since, since, since. It, back in ancient Egypt. <laughs> you mm -hmm. understand? Oh, yeah. No doing doubt. brain surgery. Yeah. Doing brain surgery. It's on the walls All of Kemet. Like it's on the walls of Kemet. The oldest libraries in the world that had scrolls, books, all of these things. So when these people came in and saw, we weren't just in villages and stuff. We talking about high society, high high level society with with a sewage system, with ventilation. Uh, you know, we we listen. Once you know who you are and that these are the people that you come from, then nobody can make you feel inferior. Then you don't believe the lies. You know what I'm saying? And you won't be oh, yeah. saying silly, silly things like you you know you glad uh, slavery happened, which is an insult to your ancestors. It's an insult wow. that you would even say such a thing. That these yeah, people I heard that foolishness before. Too. I heard this person say that before How too. It, it was you, it was sad. It was people, sad. People say it. People say it. And yeah. when our brothers and sisters on the continent say, "If slavery," and they they some will say this, "If if slavery was to go on today, they would volunteer to go because they think that it's better over here than in Africa." We we are we have problems, brother. We have problems. Yes. And so I, I I don't want anybody to to think that all our problems are going to be solved just because you hit the continent of Africa. We got work. Thank you. Thank you. We thank got you. work to do, man. We <laughs> thank got work you. to do. And for somebody this is who lives over there, I'm glad that they're hearing it for somebody who actually lives on the continent and married to a native. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For real. Because yeah. sometimes when you say that, when you're over here, some people don't grasp that. They don't understand that they go through the same exact thing that we go through over here in some in some geographical locations, of course. Yeah. You know, and they go through the same systemic oppression. They go through the same exact thing because some people don't get it that a good majority of the continent, the countries over there were colonized. Even Thomas so St. Carey, all of them were, except uh, yeah. Ethiopia. Except that's yeah, Ethiopia. Yeah, the majority of them. And yeah. Ethiopia had to literally fight, and they fought, and they fought, and they fought, and they won. Uh, yeah. They, they were able to keep the, you know, get the Italians out, but. That's right. Uh, but, yeah, so they were colonized, and, the, and I'm saying from, from slavery on through colonization, it was an onslaught on the continent of Africa. Africans weren't just over there chilling, like, okay, they took some of our people, but we good to go. No, they were, this This was a war that has gone on for uh, um, for centuries, you know? And so they've changed their tactics, 
you know, they they do it. In, you know, they change their tactics, but don't don't think that we st we still in the war now. The war is not over. And to answer your question, this is why I do what I do because the war is not over, and I recognize that it's not over. But I can't just go and 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 put my head in the sand and act like it's not happening. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody got to do their part. That's right. Absolutely, Queen. That that was well said. And Queen Nanya, we thank you so much again for, for coming on the platform and sharing your experience over there and in, in, uh, working to help our people to evolve and, and our people to grow spiritually, physically, financially. We greatly appreciate your work. I'm definitely a proud donor. If y'all, if you guys are wondering whether or not it's legitimate, I donate monthly myself, you know, as oh. well. So you know, I didn't um, say the website. Okay, it's, sure, sure. You know, you want me to type it in? Yeah. And okay, the website I'll type it in is, for you, Tissy. Okay, you got it. www.sankoforepat.com. And then we're also on uh, Facebook. We Our Facebook page is Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program. Our YouTube channel is Sankofa Repatriation Assistance Program. And you can also find us with under the same names on Twitter and instagram okay is that right right there sis can you see it? Call for that's it yes. okay so family we thank you all for tuning in and listen if you want to connect with queen nana y'all please be sure to connect with our good sister uh to find out what you can do to be of assistance um she sell it so eloquently and she was absolutely correct you know we cannot do this by ourselves bottom line you know think about this i just want to leave this with you think about this even those of you who are orators you get paid to speak if you don't have any listeners your business is dead if you're a writer and you don't have anybody to read your book your business is dead okay so i said all that to say this it takes each other for us to be able to be successful in order for us to be able to accomplish our goals. And with that being said too, I want to thank everybody who has supported our business, Sanjeda Network Group LLC, where we are your community liaison for entrepreneurs and consumers. We want to come and support you. So please let us know how we can be of service to you. And we want to thank everybody who has shopped with us on El Kebalon Lifestyle. We greatly appreciate all of you who definitely have purchased from us and we greatly appreciate that. We understand without the people, the vision will perish. Queen Anaya, do you have any last remarks? Thank you so much, brother. Thank your uh, viewers for you know tuning in and for their comments and contributions to the discussion. And thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you, I appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome. So family, you all have a good evening. We thank you so much for everybody who hung in there with us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you tune in tomorrow on, uh, I believe it's June the 15th at three o'clock PM Central Standard Time. We will have, excuse me, actually Eastern Standard Time. We'll have brother um, Daryl Speaks is gonna be on, Sable Ascent is gonna talk to us about the uh, African cryptocurrency. Like Queen mentioned earlier, Akon, well guess what? He's our Akon over in the United States, Yeah. okay? He's our, he's our Akon over in the United States. We have to control our economics. The queen, she said it numerous times. I hope some of you tuned in on that. Even when it comes to war, I know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm a retired Marine. I did 20 years in the Marine Corps. I know what I'm talking about. It takes money to even fund a war. This is not Shaka Zulu times. I love yeah. you all out there now, but I'm a realist. Yeah. This is not the time of Shaka Zulu. This is not the time of Tucson Overture. The, the, the weaponry that, that they use to fight us now, you cannot defeat them with spears and bows. You can't. It's true. Okay? It even takes funding to fund a battle. You yeah. understand what I'm saying to you? So you need to make sure you get your money up, but most important, get your mind up. Peace, love, and power.